In this video, I'm going to take you through a simple and streamlined process for hiring your next front desk assistant so you can bring on the right person and save yourself the time and the headaches. Now, if you're a health professional or practice owner and you want to learn the best strategies for growing a successful practice, then hit the subscribe button because every week we're going to be releasing new videos just like this to help you grow and systemize your practice so you can increase your income, help more people and avoid that burnout. If you're getting a lot of candidates, one thing I definitely tell you to do is send out a job description. And that job description, you wanna make it as detailed as possible. Because if there's anything that doesn't sit well with the prospective candidate, then they might not even wanna go through the interview process. So I think mm -hmm. in my job description, you'll see a whole detailed list of you know roles, responsibilities, their duties. It also you know poses the shifts in there, the pay, um, what the company is about in there, there are certain expectations. Uh, for example, we have team meetings every week and those aren't, or every fortnight, depending on whatever you want to do. And those aren't optional and they may be outside of your shift hours. So all of these things, before I even interview a person, I know that I'm not going to, anything that you know, you're not going to budge on, you're not going to shift on, put that out there straight away before you even interview a person, because then it's up to them whether they've agreed to that or not. So this way you, you don't waste time interviewing people that are never going to stick anyways. And then if you still have a lot of um, a lot of applicants, then my next suggestion is always a phone interview. The aim of the phone interview isn't so much of the question answer process, because what I want to know is the answers that I that they give me in person. The phone interview is really about just testing how do they sound like over the phone? How do they answer the phone? This is a really good one, right? Like you're calling. It's an absolute unknown number. They don't know who you are. So it either says unknown number, or it says a number that they don't recognize. And then if they're like, yo, what's up? <laughs> it again tells you, you know, their mannerism, their behavior towards unknown people. And this wouldn't have shown up had you interviewed them in person. Had you told them, oh, okay, let's do a bit of role play. Or if you ask them, you know, if you answer the phone, what would you say? They would tell you, oh, hi, it's Sarah. How can I help? But that's because they're they're putting on a show. An interview is just an amazing show, like a showcase, right? That's all it is. So I want to catch them in moments of what they are like in their personal life. Because much as people believe that, you know, you're different at work, you're not. And that's just, it's not true. You are who you are. And in some shape and form, you will show your true self in any environment. So it's not like just because you're at work, you're magically a very different person. That's not true. So that's why a lot of my questions is getting to know them personally. And then I welcome the candidates that I think are good uh, in the in-person interview process. And in the in-person interview process, look, if out of 20 questions, the first five are not going well, I don't bother continuing. I just kindly sort of slowly in a good flow and the the interview process because I don't need to wait. So I've already, I already know that this is not happening. And when you do decide that a person is, you know, good for the observation shift, I suggest that you have more than one candidate go through the observation shift. They should be observing at different times, so they shouldn't be together, but have more than one for comparison. And this is something I worked with someone, I think um, they were in legacy, but I worked through her entire hiring process with her. And, you know, she's just done amazing uh, with her team at this moment. But she said to me, she said, oh, you know, I've got two or three really good candidates and I'm going to do the observation process. And I said, OK, but before you do the observation, you tell me, you know, we went through all the answers they gave her. I gave her insight on on what those answers mean and all of those sorts of things. And we dove really deep into these people. And she said, oh, I think person A is going to be the one. And I said, oh, interesting, because I felt the person A was not going to be the one. Anyways, I said, let's just see how the observation goes. And she did the observation and she, well, she and I, we got on a call and she said, oh, my God, person A was not OK. And I said, yeah, because, again, an interview process, people love to, you know, just present this piece of themselves that sometimes isn't the truth. And you can tell that, and of course, this takes practice from your end. You'll be able to slowly practice and learn the more you hear people and use the training modules, you start realizing, ah, this is what Darcy meant. Oh, okay, this is what this means. But person B, who she was okay with, turned out to be a shining star during the observation, right? 
So it's really important to see the person or hear the person over the phone, also see them in the interview process, but then actually see them in the role, especially when it's unpaid. Not many people like to do things if they're not getting uh, rewards for them, right? But that's the quality you're looking for. Because if you truly want to serve a business, if you truly want to serve the community, you're not focused on the rewards. You're focused on serving. The love of service. That's the trait you're looking for. I hope you found this video valuable. If you did, please hit the like button and don't forget to subscribe because we release content like this every week. Now I'd love to know, what was your biggest takeaway from this video? Let me know in the comments section and I'll make sure to check it out and reply back. Now, along with everything that I've mentioned in this video, we have a ton of resources as well linked in the description below. So don't forget to check those out. Last thing, I've actually gone and curated other videos I think you're gonna love. So go and take a look at these and I'll see you in the next video.